Okay. Okay, um, let, let me give a little brief intro for those that just now joined us through video. So this is a uh, Mystery Explained God's Hidden Wisdom chat room. It's Tuesday night, and it's about 7.30. We've been going for about half an hour, a little bit more than that. And I'm getting questions, which you can you know, kind of read on the board there. And right now, I, we, I was in the middle of answering and then realized I didn't put the recorder on again. But I remembered. So before I continued, then I wanted to um, get this recording going. So the question is about the difference between six-day people and seven-day people is what it is right now. And I just gave, I'm going to give a brief synopsis of what I just shared with you guys to help those that are, that are going to be wondering, what the heck, because if I start in the middle, right? So the question was about the difference between the six-day people and the seven-day people. And the way I usually begin explaining that is that we are all gods in God's infinite realm. And that on the day that we're made, that we are made with members inside of our bodies. And then we're an infinite God. We have members of our body that God created on the day that we're made. They're infinite too, by the way. Everything in God's realm, infinite realm is infinite. Even the members of our body. But then what the sons of God do is they incarnate inside of one another. Now that's kind of difficult to wrap your head around, but that's what gods do in the infinite realm. So there's an incarnation of me inside of Kathy. There's an incarnation of Kathy inside of me, and vice, you see vice versa. You're incarnate. You, those of you listening, you don't realize it, but we all know each other. All seven-day people, we all know each other from the inside out. We're members of one body, God's body in the infinite realm, and we're members of one another. Just like Paul teaches about us in heaven. In, to the Romans, in Romans 12, verses 4 and 5. Okay. So, if you're going to understand the difference between six-day people and seven-day people, the thing to realize is that the six-day people were created inside of Adam in the infinite realm on the day he was made. And an example of those people are the Chinese people. All the Oriental people. The Aborigines, the naked uh, natives out in the jungle, right? They have no beard, and they are RH positive exclusive. Like when you go to China, 99.9, .9, whatever the number is, is RH positive. They, their races have been here for hundreds of thousands and even millions of years. Mammalian races have been around not that long. The reptilian races are older. The amphibious races are older than that. And those are the ones that fly the ships that picked up Elijah and took him to heaven. So that's kind of where we were. Then whenever you realize that Elijah and Abraham and David are all skins. John the Baptist, skin for our father Adam. That Adam is the, the prophet, priest, and king of the earth. Just like Christ is the prophet, priest, and king of heaven on earth as it is in heaven works with Christ above and Adam below so David in Ezekiel 37 start at 24 that's in the new earth of Revelation 21 plus and he's king forever well that David is Adam right Bathsheba is Eve Abraham Adam Sarah Eve Moses, Eve, Joshua, Adam. They're the two olive trees of Zechariah. That's what I wrote about today for Brian. The mystery of Adam. So if you if you can see that, then you can see the difference between the six-day people and the seven-day people. The six-day people have been here a long, 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 long time. Basically beardless, RH positive, exclusive. The negative blood came with those with a part in Adam's recent incarnation. That happened in Genesis 3.21. Everything before Genesis 3.21 took place in heaven. There's no procreation, obviously, when Adam has Eve inside of him. There's no procreation in heaven, period. Adam and Eve, heavenly things. They were in any place in heaven, the heavenly garden, that is in proximity to the center of the throne where the Lamb is, the Lamb of God. In Revelation chapter 7, verse 14, in the center of the throne, that's the Lord God. That's Him. 
the Lamb of God. So when John the Baptist says, Behold, the Lamb of God takes away the sin of the world, he's talking about the Lord God who made him. So when Christ is, is testifying about John, the Lord God is testifying about his Son of God. There's only one. Everybody else is a member of his body. There's only one Son of God in the earth, and that's Adam. There's only one Son of God in heaven, and that's the last Adam. Everybody else are members of their body. Okay, so just very simply, the six-day people are the ancient races, and they represent the members of Adam's body in the infinite realm. The seventh-day people, they're in, incarnate here, they are gods just like Adam. They were made with members of their body too. And they incarnated inside of Adam, and then they began interacting with the, the members of Adam's body that were already there. And so the Indians, races that are here in the United States, why, almost wiped out by the Europeans that came. Seventh-day people came across the ocean and killed the six-day people that were here because that's what happened in the infinite realm. We're doing things already done over and over and over again. Okay, so then the next, that's kind of what we covered just before I turned the recorder on. Then the question came in from Sokin about females, males and females. Now, let me see. What I would like, well, I don't know if I'm, I guess I can just, just, give, just give you the answer. Um, a lot of people know that the Apostle Paul is like tough on women. And sometimes, I mean tough on women. He says that they're not supposed to speak in church. They're supposed to keep silent in the churches. They're supposed to take, receive instruction with entire submissiveness. It doesn't seem fair, does it? But it is fair. The reason is because in the infinite realm, Satan went about to deceive the sons of God in the infinite realm. Those that are incarnate here as women were deceived by Satan into helping him. The ones that are incarnate here as men were not deceived by Satan. They laughed at Satan. They said, say, this is never going to work. Except for one thing. They were deceived by the ones that are incarnate here as women. You see what I mean? So you kind of see the Pelosi thing playing out, the deception and everything that's going on, how she's using men to destroy Trump. These things are things that have happened in the infinite realm already. We're seeing it on a stage on the television. And it's the... I, I, don't get mad at me. I mean, the, the, it's, in the, it's, in the, it's in the scriptures for a reason. And, for example, that women are supposed to pray with their heads covered. Why does Paul say something like that? And why does he say because of the angels? Because angels are spirit witnesses. Women are water witnesses. So what that means is that veil, because you hear me talking a lot about the veils, they are extremely important. That veil, the covering that the woman wears, is the same veil that's between earth and heaven. In other words, the women are supposed to use their man as an angel. They, it's through the agency of angels that the word of God is given. And women are supposed to use their man, go through their man, learn with entire submission, uh, submissiveness and all that for their man. And you notice how the seed comes right into the prophecy. First Timothy chapter 2, verses 14 15. With entire, with entire submissiveness. And then it's through the childbearing part. You see the seed part? Okay, that's where things are made even again. So, here's the deal. Ecclesiastes, you hear me referring to only three verses of the entire book. In, right in chapter 1. That we are doing things that are already done over and over and over again. So, in order, for, the way that women get around that is by remaining silent in the churches. Because the deception that was perpetrated in the infinite realm is trying to play out again. But the way that you're going to stop it is by stopping it, you see. So then that gets you on a new course. Instead of repeating the mistake that was made before, 
then you're going to do things the way that Paul's saying. And he's not saying it because he's a woman hater. He's saying it because he knows what I know. He knows what happened in the infinite realm. He knows those things are trying to replay themselves. And he's saying it for your own good. Right? So, I mean, that's the reason that Paul's like he is. He's the one that's going to say that. But even in uh, in Peter's epistle, then we're the men, the men are to treat their mates as the weaker vessel. The water witnesses are always the weaker vessel. The Holy Spirit is not as more, it's not as powerful as the Father. The Father, the, and that's the thing that Elijah has over Moses. Elijah called down the fire of the Lord and kill in a split second. The more the power of the Father goes through Elijah, more the power of the Holy Spirit goes through goes through Moses. But um, whenever Elijah comes to restore all things, I've got a good strong feeling that he's going to be both. In other words, the two witnesses that come, like they are at the end of the age, Adam and Eve, sometimes they come together, like Abraham and Sarah, David and Bathsheba. Sometimes they come as Adam of Genesis 2-7, like a singularity. In other words, that gives him the power of the Father and the Holy Spirit, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, all in one person. Rather than having to have the two witnesses. Okay, so when you start seeing the mystery explain, um, it all really does come together perfectly and resolve. It absolutely does. It absolutely does. And that that's the thing about this this program. I really, really wish there was somebody when I was in my twenties that had had this all put together, had the book. I would have bought the book. I really, really was looking for the, the for these things all of my life. I was looking for it, and it came very very slowly. You know, they, through the 70s, 80s, and 90s, until everything came together in this book that was finally written in 2005. And I can't tell you how many Saturday mornings that I was searching on the computer, looking for Spirit, Blood, and Water, and the mystery. And, pardon me, I just could not find anybody else that had ever put it together before. So I was having to, like. Uh, Lewis and Clark expedition having to go out on the journey by myself and find it and then put it all together and it took all that time for it from 2005 all the way to 2017 before it was ever published and um, so now I'm glad that it that it is even though we're dealing with God's stuff and God is really selective about who he lets see it you guys are really lucky and I'm really lucky, too, because just imagine seeing these things and there's nobody else on the planet you can talk with it about. Nobody else understands it. That's what was me back in the, the 80s and the 90s, seeing these things, putting it together, the three witnesses, the, the Venn diagrams and things. Then there wasn't somebody to consult. There wasn't somebody to go ask a question. And so, um, anyway, I'm really happy that, that God showed it to me and then I can show it to you. I really wish that he'd have showed it to somebody before I came along, though. That would have made it a lot easier. And it does explain everything. The three witnesses, I'm not kidding you, explains everything. Even in, whenever we're in heaven and we're walking down the hallways, the things that I'm showing you right here, these overlapping circles and stuff, these colors, the spirit, blood, and the water, they're everywhere. They're on the standards. They're on the walls. They're on the columns. They're on everything. That's there. And the... The symbols that are on our chests, they show everybody what we know, our rewards that, we're, that we receive from God. Through Christ at the judgment seat, we all go up and stand before the Lord as individuals. And when we, when we all show up, when we're all looking at each other, we all look the same. But when we come back from the fire, the altar, we all look different. We're all individuals. We all have different array of stones on our chest plates. Some of us have staff, some of us don't. Some of us are tall, some of us are short, just like here. So it depends. The bigger you are, the mightier you are, the bigger, the bigger you are in heaven. But I'm not kidding you. You just cannot believe the difference from the time that we first get there. The, the kind of the feeling that I get, it's almost like, uh, it's like uh, getting off a plane and being in an airport. It's kind of the way, it, the feeling that I get. You know, it's, uh, all, everybody hustling and bustling around. But everybody's pretty much the same. Our garments are the same. It's like we're showing up to a convention of of uh, long-gowned 
people. It's kind of like, and we're, it's so much anticipation. And then we, whenever we start going up to that judgment seat, the fire burns. And after a while, you can kind of tell if they're getting good rewards or getting bad rewards. If it's too, you can, because if it's too smoky, they turn around, their, their garment's all dark. You don't want that. You want the white, the good white, good white garments and the big crown and lots of lots of stones the more stones you see the more places you can go because like i was saying heaven is like that all these stones all these insignias are everywhere if the insignias match what's in your stuff because you're a more mature member you can go anywhere you want doors open for you close behind you but if you don't have those stones doors don't open that's why this is so important seeing the three witnesses is so important because you get these things straight you get the reward in heaven. And you can jump up way in front of your, I mean, you're running the race and you're running to win, like Paul says. And you're up in the front. You can, in a very short period, start ascending up that pyramid and be nearer to Christ. That's what you want, be up there. Great accommodations near the top. Kind of basic accommodations if you're at the base of the pyramid. You want to be up high. Other than being down low. Okay, um, seventh-day people have interbred with sixth-day people here on earth. Yep. What happened in the infinite realm before that has caused this to happen now? Sons of God couldn't breed. Oh, I see what you're saying. The, um, it doesn't work exactly like that. We go into one another. I mean, at some point you understand the Hebrew or you, or just read the English of the way that's translation and it says Adam knew Eve. And we, and then we all know what that means. Adam knew Eve. But in the infinite realm, knowing someone is going into them. In other words, incarnating inside of them. It's not that they had sexual intercourse in the infinite realm. That's not how it works. It's nothing to do with that. See, whenever we became members of Adam's body, we incarnated inside of him willfully. We made the, the We're gods. We made the decision to incarnate inside of him. Well, that's what's going on inside of Adam. The members that are there, they're gods. That's incarnations, but they go inside of each other. So it's it's not it's not sexual like men and women in the earth. It has its corresponding activity that's in the infinite realm, the things that gods do. And there's things that gods do that are gods that incarnate inside of people. It's, there's the bad things that they do to the host members of that body. That's what's being duplicated here. Oh. Oh, whenever you're editing my book? Yeah. So whenever you become first um, to be able... That's not a complete sentence, Dave. I'm not quite sure what you're saying. To be able to experience what Adam experienced. Because the thing is that Adam is not the only God in the infinite realm who died. It just so happens that this universe, this, this universe is one son of God being restored. And his name is Adam. But guess what? There's another universe like this one. And it's Kathy's universe. Because you're a God in the infinite realm who died too. Members of your body. So the thing to realize is that Adam that was killed here, he's also incarnate inside of you. So when you died, he died. That means in the, in, in the universe where it's Kathy's universe, in the beginning, whenever the Lord God made Kathy instead of Adam, you see what I'm talking about? Members of his body. You see? The, the, the Christ teaching the golden rule has application in the infinite realm. You want to treat gods here. You want to treat them, even Adam, the king of this whole universe, all these members of his body, he's going to treat every single member as sacred. Like you treat your fingers. Which one of your fingers is more important than the others? You don't want to have any of them cut off. They're all important, right? They all have a, they all have a job when it comes time to it. The thing that Adam realizes, the King David, when he's on the throne, is that there's a King David inside of each of his the members of his kingdom in another universe. And he's going to treat them good. The golden rule, you treat others the way you want to be treated. 
So the bad king treats people bad. Guess what? His incarnation is going to be treated bad in that other in that other universe. So David is going to be very uh, empathetic. He's going to be very uh, always wanting what's right and treating everybody the way he wants to be treated because that's exactly what is happening. It's not just a a golden. It's not the golden rule for for no reason. There's a very important reason for it. So you're kind to strangers even because then they are kind to the incarnation your incarnation in them they're kind back because all of us are connected all of us are members of one of one another okay we, um for in, in, is, yeah. why did we why do we incarnate inside of one another because that's what we do that's what we do we don't sit down and become bored as God's in the infinite realm. We don't name everything to be named and get bored. What do we do? We, we, we don't turn on uh, CNN. We don't turn on a movie. That's what we do for adventure. It's what we do as part of our identity in the infinite realm. Think about it. God makes everybody perfect. It's kind of like us going to the, when I was describing us going before the judgment seat of Christ, when we show up there, everybody looks the same. But, and whenever we're made in the infinite realm, we all look the same. But there's something that we do that gives us our individuality. Is whenever the members incarnate inside of us, like Kathy incarnates inside of me, Dave, here comes John. Well, I'm going to put those members at my right hand or my left hand. So all these gods are incarnate inside of me. We're all sitting around a giant table. Imagine Herod and all the people that are at his banquet. It's like that. And you have a giant table. Well, I'm going to position the gods, my brethren, around my table differently than you are. We all have our preferences based on our experiences. So the person you put at your right hand, right at your right hand, it's like your best advisor or your best friend, your best, right? That person is going to be different for you than me. And the way that you position your brethren in that around that giant table determines your outward appearance so the stones that are in your chest plate the way they're arranged has to do with the way that you arrange your brethren inside of you there's a reason for me incarnate inside of you it's not just for no reason it's not just to go on vacation there's a reason for it it's a strategy because in the mountain of god is great competition amongst the brethren for who can be the closest to god at the very top just like the body of christ that's Paul describing us as in a competition, running the race as to win. Because we are in competition. The mountain of God in the infinite realm, we're trying to get to the top of it. And who do you think we have to climb over to do that? Our brethren. So what we're trying to do is let the best of the best of the best of our brethren incarnate inside of us and put them at our right hand so that we grow in reputation. So if we have the kind of people like Judas Iscariot at our right hand, not good, right? If we have little winklings, if we have a uh, Adam Schiff at our right hand, not good. You see what I mean? So the testimony of things that are happening around us affects who we are demoting and promoting around our giant table. And when we promote the right people, it affects our outward appearance. God sees it and he elevates us in the mountain of God. We make bad decisions. We put uh, um, Nadler and Schiff and Pelosi and those people at right at our right hands because we're deceived and we're, we're fools. Guess what? God sees it. God demotes us. He sends us down. So there's a reason for incarnating inside of one another. It makes us greater than we already are. We One of our brethren has a great accomplishment. We're like, hey, come over here. The, 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 the brother, that same brother, that was, you know, at a lowly position, at our table inside of us all of a sudden gets a promotion he gets to put right right at my right side and then that promotes me so we're doing this jockeying around in the infinite realm constantly 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 because we're always in competition with our brethren infinite selves we are in the in the heaven realm are not perfect okay so i'm looking at your question there so the infinite selves we are in the heaven realm are not perfect 
the the heaven realm is almost infinite the heaven realm is almost infinite I'm wanting to pull up a diagram the Father Son and the Holy Spirit the heaven of Genesis 1 1 who is the word is almost infinite the Son of God is something that's between God and men first Timothy 2 5 one God and one mediator right between God and man, the man, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Christ Jesus. The reason Christ Jesus is between God and men is because the Son of God is something between God and men. Something between infinite and finite, which I characterize as almost infinite. So there is no such thing as an infinite self in the heaven realm. The only place where an infinite self exists is in the infinite realm, period. Then you incarnate a God from the infinite realm incarnates into heaven, okay, and then incarnates onto the earth. Then you have three incarnations, one in the earth, one in heaven, and one in the infinite realm. Spirit, blood, water, three witnesses, one person. That's the way it works. Um, so whenever you use a term like perfect, then the semantics is going to play a role there. Because generally, when you're in, in the Greek, whenever you're looking at the word perfect, it's not what you think it is. And what the word means is mature. So, not that it never makes an, a mistake, but that it is, it began as something that was a babe, and then it becomes something that's mature, like the babes in Christ when you first get saved. And then you chew on the word, you eat the word, you get the milk, you get the meat, you get the bones, you get every, you, you, you grow up and be good and strong. That's the mature type of deal. So if you think about it in the infinite realm, if everybody was perfect, there would be no Satan. There would be no rebellion. And there is. I mean, God had to keep a secret. And he did. He made Satan. And then Satan wound up being the murderer. Right? Iniquity was found in him. And the sons of God were deceived, beguiled. Well, if we were perfect, made perfect on the day we were made, that would be impossible, wouldn't it? How do you, def how do you beguile, trick, deceive a perfect son of God? Sounds impossible, doesn't it? Well, <laughs> the thing is, they can be very, very mature and still be beguiled. And that's what happened. The ones that are here as women... We're tricked by Satan. The ones that are here as men were not tricked by Satan. They were tricked by those incarnate here as women. So now we're here doing those things over and over and over again. And breaking the cycle. That's why Paul is tough on the women. It's because he wants us to break the cycle of what happened already in the infinite realm. Just simplified all. Well, that's good. The, um, the three witnesses do a lot to do that. And whenever you see the pictures in the diagrams and you, be, you get accustomed to them, then you can see them, the larger picture of the infinite realm as a spirit, heaven as a soul, the physical earth as, a bo as the body part. Um, okay, so I think we covered, other than I would have liked to have pulled up some diagrams, but I have my little window on this room. And when I start pulling up, I think I want to. I want to pull up for those that are watching us. I want to go to my diagrams and just pull one up because I'm talking infinite realm. And I'm here's one right here. This should help us to see. Open with right there. Okay, I can't see you guys, but I can see this diagram. And this is the. This is God created the heaven and the earth from the first diagram, the very simple one. And so heaven became the kingdom of his beloved son. And this earth becomes the kingdom of this creation. And here's the kingdom of God. This is the infinite realm where we are. Over here is God's. And um, this is the only realm that's real. Heaven and earth are created. These are incarnations. Last Adam, first Adam. That's right here. So when I'm talking about the infinite realm, this is over here where God is on the God side. 
then the heaven realm almost infinite that's here and then this is the finite realm that's right here and the other diagram that I already had pulled up I think it's still pulled up was for Dave because Dave asked if the lake of fire was in the infinite realm the infinite realms up here where the stones of fire are okay this is where Satan is this is their three witnesses they're not being shown as singularities here but as a tabernacle as, as the man like this is the man Christ Jesus Father Son and Holy Spirit this is the man the Almighty God to come God who was a God who is God who was the lake of fire is right here this is the mystery of Christ this is the mystery of iniquity so they are antithesis doctrines whenever Paul teaches you about the mystery of Christ he is also teaching you simultaneously about the antithesis doctrine the mystery of iniquity for example we are seated in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus Ephesians 2 4 to 7 we're raised with him we see we are seated with Christ in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus that's right here the heaven side over here so this is a lot like Jacob and Esau two halves two children one womb fighting here they are heaven okay so this side over here is where the lake of fire is and it's not that the Satan, I mean, it's not that the Antichrist is going to be coming to set up his abomination of desolation. The temple's not restored yet. This is the abomination of desolation being set up in the soul of the unbeliever. The one that rejects the gospel. The one that accepts the false gospel. Christ is incarnate inside of me. The Antichrist is incarnate inside of him. We are temples of the Holy Spirit. They are temples of the unholy spirit. So some people are looking for the Antichrist to come and set up in the temple. Whenever we are the temple, we're moving through the soul period. This has been at work since Paul's day. Last 2,000 years. And there are people that are boiling in the lake of fire right now. They don't know it. Just like we are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus right now. And we don't know it. But we are. And when the rapture happens, you're going to realize we're already there. And that we're in the middle of a conversation. And we're going to finish the sentence when the rapture happens. And these other, these bad guys, they're all around us. They think that they run the world. They own the world, the shifts and the Pelosi's. They're already burning in the lake of fire. Whenever the rapture happens, they're going to wake up there. They're going to be really, really surprised about what's going on. Okay, so um, I just pulled up the diagrams and helped the uh, our listeners. Who, I mean, whoever's... Cause, plan is to upload this video and to inspire more people to join us and to come and bring their questions on these different topics no the lake of fire is an almost infinite realm it's in the almost infinite realm it's in it's the heaven in between God and men so you, if you can understand that we're baptized into Christ well, those that are baptized in the Antichrist, they're in the lake of fire, like we're in the paradise side. So look inside the earth. You see the paradise, the bosom of Abraham. You see the people on the other side? They're in torment. They're in Hades. Heaven, is, that's a picture of what it, the way it is in heaven. There's a paradise side. Instead of being in the bosom of Abraham, where are you? You know, you're in the bosom of, you're, you're a member of Christ's body. Our life is hidden with Christ in God, too. Colossians chapter 3, verse 4. Okay. So, that's another word that is difficult, is eternal. Because some people think eternal is like infinite, and it's not. Things that are eternal have an end. They have a beginning, and they have an end. The things that's infinite is is in the infinite realm. That's the only realm that's real. Anything that's in heaven, anything at earth, has a beginning and it has an end. So yes, you can call it an eternal. You can call it eternal father if you want to. If you're talking about my father who art in heaven, you can call him that. He has an end. The Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit in heaven, I know it sounds like blasphemy, but they all have an end. Because the Son is going to continue to enlarge, 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 enlarge. He's going to swallow up the Father and the Holy Spirit. And he's going to become the Word again. So the Word had to be broken in order to be the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But the Son continues to enlarge until he's the Word again. That's the secret of the mystery process. 
the heaven that is between the heavens and the earth is going to swallow up the heavens and the earth. Your soul is going to swallow up your physical body and your spirit. All the blood witnesses always return to the original singularity state. The, the, your soul testifies for the original singularity, not your mind, not your spirit, not your body. The soul. Eventually, people are going to walk around and you're only going to see the soul. You're not going to see the physical body. You're not going to see the spirit. You're only going to see the soul. But that takes, you have to recreate the environment many, many, many times. God, so in other words, what happens in Revelation 21.1, that's not the only time there's a new heaven and new earth. That's only the first time. There are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times to follow after that. At a certain point, we're going to pass through a veil and the physical bodies are no longer going to be bodies. They're going to be souls. Like Adam in Genesis 2.7. Eventually, in time. When we're just getting started in this universe. And each time that it's remade, earth and heaven will be closer to being the same size. So that right now there's such a large time differential between heaven and earth because there's such a size differential between heaven and earth. When God remakes them, each time the body's going to be closer to the same size as the soul. Until, eventually, it's made enough times then there won't be as much of a difference. The time differential, the space differential, everything, there won't be much of a difference. But also, whenever that happens, there's a skewing of the line between spirit, blood, and water witnesses. Because only the soul is going to be testifying. You're not going to be able to see the body. You're not going to be able to see the spirit. So right now, it's easy for us to see that the earth was formed out of water and by water and all that. Second Peter 3.5. It's easy to see because our water, our planet is covered by water. But what happens whenever the planet, when there are no oceans? The next time the earth is created, there's going to be no oceans. There's only going to be lakes. And the time after that, and the time after that, there's going to be fewer and fewer of them. And so the notion of the earth being a water witness won't be as easy to figure out if you're following my drift. There are many things that we're learning now we're going to carry with us into the ages to come that's going to help us because we were walking around on an earth that was covered by water. Others that are going to come behind us are not going to have that. They're not going to have that experience. We're going to explain, be explained to them about rain and things like that, thunderstorms. They're not even going to have a clue what we're talking about. Earthquakes and all that, they're not going to have a clue. They're going to say, you really mean... Really, that lightning was coming out of the sky because even in the next age, it's not like it. Even in, during the day of the Lord coming up, it's not like that. There's a dew that comes at night. That's it. They don't have the terrible hurricanes and storms and things like we have now under the devil's rule. The God of this world is the devil and destructions everywhere. But whenever the devil's chained, think about it. Elijah's here restoring all things. We're going to be in heaven looking down and we're going to be pushing the levers on earth as it is in heaven. Heaven's restored, earth is restored together. And we're going to be part of it. Elijah's doing the thing on the earth at the same time. So once the restoration of all things is complete, the lake of fire is no more. Doesn't work that way. Now that the, we can get tied up with semantics and the way that we ask our questions and where you're thinking one thing and I'm thinking something different. So, if you're talking about the ages of the ages, that's the Greek use of the Aorus text, by the way, of the Aorus tense, I should say. It doesn't translate well into English. What, the, the, what that means is, is that a series of, of words that work in perpetuity, things that are, for, uh, that, that are forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And uh, the whenever you get all the way to the end of the ages, because if you notice when you read about about uh, the devil and being being tormented, that's the way that it's written. And they are tormented forever and ever to the ages of the ages. And some people 
translate that to be forever and ever, but it actually does have an end. Everything that has, like I said before, if it's in the heaven and the, or the earth, it has a beginning and it has an end, which makes you kind of wonder of what's going to happen to those who are in the lake of fire at the ages of the ages. If they're tormented to that point and there's an end, it makes you wonder if it's like, uh, are they just being tormented Why the heaven and earth are in use? And if at some point God lets them out on the other side, and I'm kind of going to leave that to God. And one of the reasons is you don't want to inspire people to be bad just because they think they're going to get away with something at the end. You know what I mean? That people should want to be good as if the torment is for an infinite amount of time and that you, you, know, you really shouldn't do the thing. Um, so I kind of, I don't, I, I don't know, David, if, um, if I would like to conclude that all that's done, the, as far as Satan and the beast and the false prophet and all the members of their body, I like to, the way I like to vision it is that we all go back to the infinite realm. We all go back restored. But the devil and uh, Satan, the members of his body, that they're cut off from the infinite realm so that God uses the heaven and the earth as a prison. So, in other words, everything is restored that is restorable in this universe. But there's going to come a time, as I've, you haven't seen the newsletter where I was answering Brian on that yet. But the, at the, because I was talking about, writing about what the very time that you're talking about, when there, when there's the ages of the ages at the very end, there's going to be no more men. There's going to be no more angels. Because all the men and the angels are going to be made back into one again. They're all put back together. Humpty Dumpty style. The last person to go up Jacob's ladder. We just call it Jacob's ladder. It's not going to be called that. But just imagine when people don't die. How do you go to heaven? It's up Jacob's ladder. So there, so everybody that serves David in his throne. Eventually. And we're talking about David in the new heaven and new earth. Okay. They're going to go up and up Jacob's ladder and they're going to serve the lamb. They're going to come out. That ladder opens up facing the wrong way away from the lamb on the sea of glass. You have to walk up that ladder and then turn around. And then, you, oh my goodness, look at that. The lamb's up there in the center of the throne. You're on the sea of glass. Well, the last person that's going to go up that ladder is going to be David. He's going to send everybody else, every single person in this universe is going to make that trip up there. But see, creation's when it's remade. Right now, you look up and you see darkness. But it's not going to take too many. Revelation uh, 21, 1, new heaven and new. It's not going to take too many of those before. When you look up, it's just solid light. Solid light everywhere. And that's what I mean. Those that come behind us are not going to be able to fathom the idea of stars in the sky. They're not going to be able to even fathom what that means. Because they're not going to look ever be able to look into a dark sky that you see the stars from the distance because the light is from everywhere. Those of us that are here now, we're going to have the benefit of seeing it later in the ages, how it changes into, and we're the first fruits that are seeing it now living under Satan under in this evil age. So we're going to have stories to tell them that they will not even be able to believe. They'll think we're out of our dang minds. What do you mean darkness was everywhere? They can't even imagine. So, um, it's almost like the same question asked of Jesus about Judas, um, just as singularities. Um, Judas had to be there. He had to be part of the equation. Jesus knew before that he told everybody else what was going on there, but that's part of the that's that was part of the plan. I mean, God knew. That Eve was going to transgress. God knew it. And then Israel. God knew Israel was going to transgress. Both have transgressions. Right? God knew, So that was the plan from the start. So whenever the gospel of the kingdom was offered, it's a water witness gospel message that, that came first. That was made last. So the blood witnesses could go first. 
That's what the type is. The first is last and the last is first. There, there are actually parallel meanings to that. Like Adam and Eve, the first in the garden, are the last two witnesses in Revelation 11. So the first is last in that sense. But in the other sense is the water witness. For example, the Holy Spirit is the water witness of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit came first. The Holy Spirit had to come out of the side of the Word, just like Eve came out of the side of Adam. And then the Father, the Spirit of the Father, had to overshadow the Holy Spirit. And then the, where they overlapped is where the Son was begotten. So the Son came last, but He's made first. In other words, put ahead of the Holy Spirit, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. He has the number two position. And he has the number two number. Spirit's one, blood two, Holy Spirit three. One plus two plus three equals six. Six is the number of man because of that. But the Holy Spirit came first, and when the Son was begotten, became last. The same thing with the Holy with the uh, Gospel of the Kingdom. It was sent first, but it was made last. So Elijah is going to come and preach the Gospel of the Kingdom. That. John the Baptist preached first, and it's going to be preached at the end of the age last, because it was made last. God had to have his body of rulers and judges first, the blood witnesses, us. We're going to be raptured. We see it in the heavenly places so that the late reigns bride can be gathered through the gospel of the kingdom for the next 3,600 years. They're going to be added to that sea of glass, you see. So we had to be made first, because we have to sit in the heavenly places that are vacated by Satan. God needs sons to vacate, to occupy those heavenly places. That's what we're here for. He's going to take us. He's going to reward us. He's going to put us in those heavenly places. Satan's going to be chained. And then whenever he Satan realizes what's happening, he's going to be a man on the earth with his beast and with his false prophet. Um, verse, please, for your Jesus about Judas question. Uh, Jesus was asked if Judas will be forgiven. I, you're going to have to show me that verse too. I mean, I'd like to see that. I don't remember. I don't remember where he was ever asked that. And if he was, it would not be favorable. It wouldn't be. Uh, yeah, he's going to be forgiven too. He's the son of perdition. He is representative of. He's a type of actually, of the son of perdition. Of the Antichrist type of him there's no salvation for him he's a bad guy thank you very much for joining this was our uh, it's our second Bible study in uh, the chat room and thank you for watching and um, you're invited to join us next Tuesday we meet every Tuesday 7 o'clock to 9 o'clock Eastern time and um, bring your your Bible questions, go to the website and you can get your hands on a newsletter and happy to have you have you uh, to join us. Get, get more information here at the website. Here, you get more information right here at the website. This is the uh, scripture section right here. And this is where you can subscribe to join us right here. So thank you guys again. And I'll see you on the next uh, mystery report coming out next Tuesday. Make a special report. If there's, uh, there's time to do so in this coming week.